I had a hive that, um, that had a real mean mother and I decided I was going to change the genetics because this hive was always stinging. Took me about an hour to find the queen because they were actually protecting the queen, keeping her, um, they had a ball around her. I got about 100 stings that day. I found the queen, I X'd her head off, they made a new queen, but the next year they survived the winter and they made me a lot of honey the next year. And they weren't stingy anymore. We're taking out queen cells, they're just starting to think about swarming. Well, I've been working for about five or six years, or seven or eight, I think, selecting and also bringing in uh, select genetics from um, places like Vermont and uh, Washington. I'm looking for a bee that can endure our length of winter, which takes a conservative bee. The main reason why bees uh, don't survive Alaska is the duration plus starvation. Some beekeepers in Alaska choose to kill their bees. To me, they're too precious to kill. It's going to be a long road to make beekeeping sustainable in Alaska. A lot of people need to work on it. Being an owner of a supplement and, and natural food store, wintering the bees rather than killing them and uh, not using chemicals and, and using natural cell size just, just fit in with, with uh, what I'm about. Keith used to come in and uh, buy essential oils and calendula and stuff like that and I had heard about him a little bit and didn't quite know who he was. He was, uh, you know, he's a little bit of an outlaw I guess you could say in the beekeeping community up here because he's into wintering his bees. We, we you know, started exchanging information about beekeeping. It's good to talk with Nathan about bees because he picks it up good. At first it was just basically he was just my mentor in beekeeping but we do a lot together now business-wise as well. We're like peas and carrots, beans and rice, mustard and ketchup, cowboys and cowboy hats. <laughs> so anyways, what I do, oh, they're still there, I'll show them to you. Anyways, I'm talking to the camera, man. Why won't you talk with the camera? Most people have heard by now that there's a huge loss every year of, of honeybees down in the lower 48 especially. You know, 25%, 40%, I mean, it's huge every year. It didn't make any sense to me personally to do what they're doing. They're failing, really. They're, they're theorizing that it's between antibiotics, chemicals, herbicides, anything and everything. What I think it is, is beekeepers trying too hard and they, they need to simplify their beekeeping and get them on a natural system. Other than zero treatments, and treatments could be anything from essential oils, giving them fake pollen, you know, mite away, miticides, fungicides, those are all unnatural, obviously, and, and what it's done over the years is it's created an environment where you end up with weak bees and and strong uh, mites and bugs and stuff. There's a lot of beekeepers that are frustrated with the system that's uh, currently in place. Uh, a lot of beekeepers don't want to put stuff in a hive that the bees wouldn't bring in on their own. They're being propped up by chemicals. If people don't like change and if that's what they've been taught then the Honey Bee Association tells, tells you to do that and Monsanto buys a bee genetics company and comes up with a bogus reason of why that's a good thing, people do it, so. Is that too political? At least. Introduce these bees to the box. Oh, my face. One of the two. Make sure I'm zipped up. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Now that's an overwintered hive, right? <laughs>